Just a quick note that this was done on the Steam version of the game. If you have the old CD install or just an old version of the game for some reason, you can download the latest patch in the description. The first thing you want to do is clear out any settings files or any leftover files that were in your previous install. So just head to where your Fallout 3 was located and delete everything in there. And then head to your documents, my games, Fallout 3 folder and delete everything in there except the saves folder if you want to keep them. Now go ahead and install the game, but install it somewhere outside of system folders. Folders such as program files x86 don't work properly the reason being is that there can be a lack of permission issue depending on your computer for steam what you want to do is add a steam library folder so what you want to do is click steam at the left top settings downloads steam library folders add library folder if you get a prompt that says you can't do it on the same drive or something like that you can simply make a partition or put it on another drive if you don't know how to make a partition then just go ahead and google it after it's done installing run the game click play and then if there's a crash install games for windows live and there's still a crash change the resolution to your screen resolution and if there's still a crash then try to install the windows 10 fix assuming you're on that operating system to install that go ahead and extract all the files and then run the .exe file and from there it's pretty self-explanatory after that you should be given a key prompt just ignore it and alter for the game but before you continue the video i recommend making a backup of a game just make a folder somewhere outside of system folders and copy and paste your entire game into there next go ahead and install Fallout Script Extender, which disables games for Windows Live. This is also used for installing mods. Either way, we're going to be installing mods later for stability reasons. To install a Fallout Script Extender, simply download the beta version of 1.3b2, open the file, and put everything into your main directory. And after that, run fosc underscore launcher.exe file whenever you want to open the game. If there is no .exe extension there, then just go ahead and click view at the top and enable file name extensions. This isn't really technically required, but I highly recommend it because it's important for any general PC use. Now if you want to run Fallout Script Extender from Steam to you know take pictures or count your hours, what you want to do is simply rename or move falloutlauncher.exe and then rename the fosc underscore launcher.exe file to just falloutlauncher.exe with no spaces. Now go ahead and run the game from Steam if you wanted to do it like that or just run the .exe, start a new game and make sure there is no crash. If there is a crash around the new game, then we can try editing a file. Also, you can do this if you don't have crashes too, because I've heard it can help performance. But anyway, open up follow.ini in the documents my games fall three folder where we were before. And anyway, what you want to do is open be used threaded AI equals zero, and then change the zero to a one. After that, go ahead and press enter and then add inum hq threads equal two and test the game again. If it still crashes, I would try changing the inum hq threads equal to to a one instead if it still crashes around the new game area then you can try changing resolution to your screen resolution if you haven't already also to do this you need to be in the fall launcher so if you renamed it earlier to run fall script extender from steam make sure to name it back and if that doesn't work and you have an intel hd graphics card you can try out this mod all you do is download it and then drag and drop the d3d9x.dll file into your fallout's main directory it's also been recommended to un check water reflections in the advanced tab if you experience any performance issues. Now we'll just install some stability mods. The first mod we'll talk about is New Vegas Anti-Crasher. To install this mod, click Files, Manual, Download, Slow Download, and for some of these mods you might need to sign into an account due to the size limit with downloads. Anyway, go ahead and open the file and then head into your games directory and open up the data folder. Now from this point you want to make a folder called FOSC with no spaces, go into that folder and make a plugins folder. Then in the mods file, open up the nvac plugins folders and then put the nvac.dll folder into your plugins folder you made earlier now just go ahead and launch the game and then when it's open go ahead and close it and then open the fosc.log file in your main directory and then it should tell you whether or not the mod was loaded the next mod is fallout 3 tick fix which can fix stuttering issues just download it and simply put the fosc folder into your data folder the next one is the large address aware enabler. So without getting technical, the normal game can only use two gigabytes of physical memory. With this, it basically lets it use up to three gigabytes. If you are on a 32-bit system, I wouldn't recommend getting this mod. If you really, really want this mod and you're on a 32-bit system, go on the mods page and there is a guide for 32-bit systems there. Anyway, if you were on a 64-bit system, just go ahead and make a folder anywhere on your computer and put everything from the mod file into there. 
and then go into your main directory for Fallout 3 and put the Fallout3.exe file into the folder for the mod. Now go ahead and run the start.bat file and press any key and then press A and then it should be good. It should just finish it up but just in case press v and then it should tell you to find this line and if you can't see this line there then it's not enabled properly once it's done put the default3.exe file into where it was originally which is in your main directory and you want to make sure that you replace after that you can delete the 3 gb files you extracted earlier if you want the next mod is OGG Vorbis Libraries, which also without getting technical reduces audio issues and can also even boost performance. To install this, basically open up the file and put the two files into your main directory, replacing when you're asked to. Next mod is the Fallout 3 mod limit fix, which has a pretty self-explanatory name and you might think it's not necessary if you don't want to mod the game, but it can also increase loading times and improve overall performance. What you want to do is open the file and drag and drop the data folder into your main directory. Next mod is Command Extender, which adds a lot of functions that modders can use and it can also fix a bunch of bugs in the game. Open and put the FOSC folder into your data folder. Next, we'll do some configurations to disable the mouse acceleration and change the field of view. To change your field of view, open up the follow.ini file, which is in the documents my games fall 3 folder I mentioned earlier, and then search for display in brackets. Then go to the way bottom until it says control, and then above that, so it's still in the display area, what you want to do is put f default world equals some number dot zero 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 zero. Then you want to go under that and put f default first person fov equals equals number dot four zeros. Now for the number part after the equals you want to put whatever you want. For me I would recommend doing 90 on default world FOV and 70 on the first person FOV. Now for the mouse acceleration part, you want to go to the controls part I mentioned earlier and add the text on screen in there. All the text will be in the description if you want to copy and paste it and then you should be good to go. Now I'm going to install some more modity mods. The mods here add stuff to the game, sort of. They fix a lot of bugs and stuff like that for the best possible experience. So I highly recommend installing all of these. The first thing you'll want to do, which is a required step for most mods, is to activate archive and validation in validated. What you want to do is download the file, open it, and run the .exe that comes with it, and then click activate. Now the first actual mod we're going to use is the unofficial Fallout 3 patch, which fixes a shit ton of stuff in the game. It's best to have this for the best possible experience. Down the main file and the update file and then open up the main file you downloaded and drag and drop everything into your data folder in your main directory. Do the same thing with the update file and replace whenever you're asked to. You can also install these mods I'm talking about with a mod organizer which I'll talk about later. The next mod is Chasm which is a save manager sort of thing. This can pretty much prevent a lot of headache and worry with the game. And if you're going to use this, I highly suggest using new save only. Don't really save over any other saves. Saves are pretty small in size, so it doesn't matter that much. To install this, open up the file and put the chasm.esp file into your data folder. And it's also recommended to disable quick saving whenever you're using chasm. The next mod is to the Owl's Tweaks. This mod compared to the other mods here change a lot more noticeable stuff in the game. There is a lengthy list on the features section of the mod page and even if this is your first playthrough I'd recommend getting this since it improves a lot of the game's annoyances and shit. If you don't like something you can disable it in the highly configurable .ini file. So to install this open up the file and put everything into the data folder in your game's directory and after that run the game once you don't have to even get in game just get to the main menu and it'll create a .ini file which is in the FOSC plugins folder so you can open that and toggle any features that you want disabled or enabled simply by changing the numbers to from 0 to 1. If you want an easier visual on changing these, I would highly recommend using Notepad++. Now before you run the game, I'd advise you to open the follow launcher.exe file, which if you renamed it earlier, rename it back to that and then run it through Steam, because for me, I get an error if I don't run it through Steam. After that, click data files and make sure the chasm.esp file and or the unofficial follow 3 patchesm are checkmarked. 
I only say and or because if you choose to get one mod and not the other, if you did install these mods, you want to enable both of them. If you're going to continue to get mods, I'd highly recommend using Mod Organizer 2, which is a mod manager. And it's the only mod manager that hasn't really caused me any problems that weren't my own fault. If you want to learn how to use that program, go ahead and look up a tutorial because it's kind of in depth and this video isn't just for modding. So good luck with that. But if you're going to use a mod organizer and want to launch Fallout 3 through Steam with mods still, because with mod organizer, you have to launch it through the program. What you want to do is right click the game on Steam and click properties, set launch options, and then copy the path to your mod organizer.exe file and paste it in the set launch options thing. And then at the end of that, put a space and then percent command percent. It should look something like this and make sure it has the quotes in the .exe path. And you might think, why didn't we just do this for the Fallout Script Extender? But the reason for that is whenever I do that, I get an error and I don't know why. Now at this point, you are completely done. If you're new to this game, I'd open up the game, click options, display, and then make sure general subtitles is enabled. 